Hello everyone and welcome back to another Minecraft tutorial video. Today we are doing a continuation on our custom trades and villagers video that we had last time. Now in the last video we learned how to set up the ideal villager, making them persist in other chunks, making them stand still when we need them to, and in addition we also set up a single custom trade, which was one em or four emeralds rather for a piece of diamond horse armor. In this video, we're actually going to be talking about making custom items be traded from the villagers and showing a very cool shortcut. So you should be able to do these sorts of trades en masse rather than spending about an hour for each custom shop that you want to set up. So without further ado, let's jump back into it. So now that we know the basics of custom trading, why don't we spice it up a little bit? The villagers don't have to ask for emeralds and the items don't even have to be normal Minecraft items that the player can get throughout the world. Instead, why don't we set up a trade that adds a currency into our world? We'll have the players just get normal diamonds that they can mine underground or for other quests maybe that we give them, and they can trade them into a specific banker villager for coins. And then maybe we can use the coins for other purchases around the world rather than having emeralds or, you know, other things that could inflate the market. So for this, we just have uh, the exact same command that we had in the previous command block. We're just going to add on to it here. So this is still in the same recipe section as before. We've done our buy and sell, which is closed out two brackets right here. So now we're going to want to add a comma and another set of brackets to add another buying and selling within here. So we will start by saying we want the villager to now buy another set of curly brackets to define. Again, we will say the ID which is a text field, Minecraft colon diamond, and the double quotes. And we'll say maybe one diamond for this trade, and that will end that. Now, if we step out of that curly bracket, we can also say we're looking to sell another field, another text field, so we'll do the double quotes, Minecraft colon, we'll have the gold nugget be the coin. And of course, we will set the count to be 16 coins for one diamond. Okay, perfect. But as you know, this is just currently diamonds for gold nuggets. There's nothing that actually denotes them as coins, which means they would just stack with other gold nuggets and it doesn't really add a new currency system to our world. So how do we get around this that adds sort of a unique item that the player can't just get on their own? Well, there's a couple ways, and players can always figure out certain ways to sort of gamify things, which is why we're going to try and block that off. So the first thing that we can do to this is actually add another parameter directly after the count of the gold nuggets, and this is where they're actually going to be named coins. So if we come in here, the next parameter actually starts with tag to denote that we're actually tagging the specific item. We're going to need another set of curly brackets for what we want the tags to be, and the first tag is display. So now we know we're modifying the display of the coin item and another set of curly brackets. I told you this was going to get quite long. And within the display modification, we just want to display and modify the name. So that's capital N name with a colon. And now we're defining a text set of parameters. So that's the single quotation marks there. And yet another set of curly brackets. So within the name field, there's actually a couple of things that we can change. So the first thing we're going to change, just like before, it's a text field. So we say text in the double quotes, and we're going to call it coin. We'll end the double quotes there. So this names our golden nuggets coin. But players, of course, can rename items in anvils and things like that. So to make sure that they can't just name golden nuggets coins and abuse the system, we're also going to give the items the lore tag, which is something that players cannot currently do in vanilla Minecraft, at least to my knowledge. So next up, after that text field, we will go ahead and add a comma because we're done with the name field within the display. Now we want to edit the lore field within the display. Lore can actually be on several lines. So this one is grouped together by a set of square brackets. And then it's a set of text fields. So it's the single quotes. And then it's another set of curly brackets. Now within the set of curly brackets, a text field. So double quote text. And this will actually be what it says on the coin. So we'll say a premium currency. And we will end the quotation mark there. And that should be it. That's everything we need from lore and name. 
So it gets closed out because we don't need anything else in the display field and we don't need anything else in the tags at all. So coming back out now, we're having the villager sell golden nuggets, 16 of them, with the tag display editing the name and lore of coin and a premium currency. You can see we have loads of brackets ending this right now. Feel free to pause the video and just to make sure, you know, you have the correct amount of brackets and all that because this can get really annoying. But the more you practice it, the better you'll get at it. You can also practice writing these commands in an actual text document like notepad or something so you can edit them easily rather than clicking around within a Minecraft command block. Uh, so you can sort of copy and paste in between. Perfect. Now you can see our command has gotten quite long, which we're not actually doing that much. We're just having the villager sell a named item. So if we go ahead and resummon our Samson, the uh, butcher come banker, we can right click on him and we can see that he still has the original trade that I left in there of four emeralds for one diamond horse armor. But now, if you have one diamond, he will sell 16 coins. And look at that. They're named coin, and they say a premium currency. I don't actually have a diamond, because this is a cosmic shard from uh, our Titan friend. So if I go ahead and grab a diamond. Oh, look at this. I found this underground. Oh, oh, what's that? You got some coins from me? Oh, fantastic. We'll take 16 coins. Thank you so much, Samson. So now look at that. The player has coins. They're tagged a premium currency, so they shouldn't be able to to edit them, and just like that, we've set up our own custom item sold by a villager. So that's pretty much all you'll need to set up a premium RPG-like currency to give your world some flavor and stuff like that. You can see our Samson here is currently selling some horse armor for emeralds, and he's buying diamonds for coins, which you can use elsewhere on your server. All well and good. But the meat of this whole system comes from actually selling unique RPG-like items to your players. Now, of course, these can be anything ranging from enchanted armor to custom tools that do all sorts of stuff. We'll get into making items in a different video. But as for the villagers selling them, well, we can set up something a little unique for the players. So here we're going to use the coins from the previous uh, Samson over here. Uh, speaking of which, Samson, you may want to uh, head to the... Oh, oh, he doesn't want to leave. All right, well, you'll suit yourself. So we're going to use the coins from the previous Samson to give the player a slappy stick, or basically just an enchanted object that you can sort of make your own. Uh, but this is a placeholder for anything, any weapons you want to add or anything cool. This is just showing you that you can have custom items on both sides of the trade, where the coins are the thing you give to the villager and the villager sells this cool stick. So it's the same exact command as before, everything we've done up to until now, uh, and we are just going to go in and add a couple of things. So we're going to want to come back to right before the square bracket here to add in another buy command, just like we've been putting in before. But instead of starting it this time with a buy, we are actually going to start it with a new parameter. This one is going to be called max uses, and we will set it to one. Now we'll get into what this actually means. Basically, when you're setting up trades, unless you specify, villagers sort of have a randomized number of how many times they can trade something with you uh, per day and in total. Now this flag or parameter right here can sort of surpass that and you can hard set it. So for example, if you want our RPG item here to only be bought once by any player, then we can set the max uses of this trade to be one. If you'd rather it be almost infinite so it can never run out, you can also set it to be a very long string. I think it's something like 200,000 something. You can check that on the Minecraft wiki. It's a similar string for all numerical values. So after we put the max uses one here, we're only going to have this sick stick be sold once. We are then going to start with our buy. And once again, we have to set up what we're buying. So we're going to have the ID another text field, always for the ID. So we want the villager to buy our currency that we just previously set up. So we're gonna set it to be Minecraft colon gold underscore nugget. But of course we don't want the villager to just take any gold nuggets. So we wanna set it to our specific gold nuggets called coins. So we're gonna have to go in and add all of the parameters that we did previously. So we'll start by setting the count to maybe 32 coins. Maybe it's a little bit of an expensive rare item here. And remember that we have to go into the uh, tag of the item itself. So we'll set that up with a couple of curly brackets. Um, and we want to edit the display. So we'll get into that one with another couple of curly brackets. Uh, and then we want to edit the name field so we can actually call it a coin. Um, so we will start there. And before we get into the curly brackets, this one is going to be a, a slew of uh, texts. So we want two single quotations like that. 
and then the curly brackets within that so we can set it up. And of course, we want a double quotes here because it's a string to be text. Uh, and again, starting with the double quotes, uh, it is going to be called coin. Oh, without the S. Uh, just like we had it on the previous merchants page and we can set it up like that. So next up, we want to do the lore. So we will get out of this name section, finish with a single quote, add a comma, and then we want to add the same lore that we put on the coins. So we will do that, put the colon, and then of course, we'll start with the square brackets. And it's going to be another slew of text stuff. So we will mark it with the single quotations. And just like before, you'll start to get the hang of it. We want to head into the curly brackets. And because these are text strings, we will start with the double quotes, write text. And then we want to put uh, the actual lore in another set of double quotes, which we said a premium currency. Now, I just want to take a minute to acknowledge the fact that a lot of errors when it comes to uh, testing your traders comes to this step right here. If you want to use custom currency to give to the traders, you have to make sure it's identical to whatever source is giving it out. For example, if you go ahead and make an adventure map where zombies uh, manage to drop slime balls, and those slime balls are specifically called mucus, and you want some trader to take those specific slime balls called mucus, you'll have to make sure they're set up in the exact same way. So if the text is mucus with a capital M, when you have the trader buy them, it also has to be set up where the text is a capital M for mucus. A lot of the times, if you go to trade something, a, a set of currency, and it's not working with a villager, it means generally you have something uppercase where it shouldn't be or lowercase where it shouldn't be and you'll just have to sort of cross-reference the two commands the one where you're summoning the villager and the one where you're spawning the currency itself so with all that said uh we have finished with our premium currency here we've actually finished with the coins so we should be able to back out of most of this stuff so the curly bracket here closes the uh text then we have the single quote to close that set of texts and the bracket to close the whole thing. We have another curly bracket to close us out of the name and lore section. And then we should have another curly bracket right here that should close us out of the display section. And a final curly bracket right here, which closes us out of the tag section. And this last one here uh, is the end of the buy section. So if we put a comma right here, you can see we're right before that square bracket. Now we want to set up what the villager sells us. So we'll set up a sell command just like before. Um, sell colon, we'll have the curly brackets because we've got to put something inside here. And it's an ID, it's a string, so we'll use double quotes. Should be Minecraft stick, just like that. Now, of course, we only want to sell the player one. And now, even though we have this set up to only, you know, trade once, we also want the count of the stick to be exactly one stick. And we're going to want to give some properties to the stick. So just like we do with the coins, we're going to go into the tag parameter. We'll open the colon, and then we will do another set of curly brackets. We're going to go into the display of the stick. Oh, not a quote there, a colon with more curly brackets. And then once we're in the display, we'll start by editing the name of the stick. So just like before, we'll set up a colon, and then because it's going to be a set of strings, we're going to want the single quotes with some curly brackets inside. Now we're going to start by setting up the text, which is a string, and the name of our stick, we'll just call it the Slappy Stick. Now, of course, this can be replaced with whatever you want to name your item, but this is purely for demonstration's sake. All right, so now we have the name of the Slappy Stick. Let's actually stay within this uh, name section right here. And let's change the color, which is also a string. So we will change the color to be, I think, light purple. That should stand out against the white uh, normally enough. Perfect. Okay. So now if we come out of the name section, before we go to test, we want to put in as much as we can so we don't have to click through this whole command block a million times. But feel free to pause the video and test it yourself if you need to. So now, once we get out of this uh, set of single quotations, we finish the name. So now... We're going to go ahead and add some lore, just like we did with the coins. So we'll set up the lore with a colon and the square brackets. And because it'll be a set of text, we're going to want the single quotes, more curly brackets. And we'll start with the text of the lore. And we'll put a little pun in here for this specific stick. So let's say, leave me alone. Perfect. And that should be enough of what we need in the lore. 
Uh, and now we're done actually with the display section. So we can get out of the next bracket because we've changed the name and lore within the display section of the tags. So now the next set of parameters we want to change within the tag is the enchantments section. And this is really where you can start to make your custom items shine. So we're going to set enchantments up just like that with another colon. Um, and it's going to be a long list of stuff. So we want these two square brackets here. And we want to head into our first one, so a set of curly brackets. And we're going to need the ID of the enchantment. So we'll start with ID colon, just like we do with items. And we'll have quotations because it's a string. And we're going to give this stick knockback, a quite high level of knockback too, one you can't normally get within vanilla Minecraft. To make it uh, more incentivizing to get this <laughs> stick from this merchant. So the ID of knockback is just Minecraft colon knockback. Uh, and this is great because the Minecraft field here means that if you have other mods that add enchantments, you can also use them as well. For example, Quark in the whatever enchantment Quark adds over here. So we finished the ID of the enchantment. Now, of course, we need to say what level we want the enchantment within the same set of brackets. So this is actually done by denoting LVL for level. And then we want another colon, and it's actually going to be a number, not a string. So we don't need quotes here. And we're going to actually set it to be level 10. And then you want to put an S after it, kind of like how you put the B for the bytes um, on all of the numbers. You put the S for enchantments. Not too sure on that one. All right, so you could be good right here, but while we stay within these square brackets, we can actually give the stick a second enchantment to make it worth 32 coins. So the second enchantment we'll add here, we will go ahead and type in the ID, and it's a string. And this one is Minecraft, colon, sweeping. So the stick can actually hit multiple enemies at once. And once again, we need to denote it by level, uh, and we'll give it a level 3 sweeping. Perfect, and that bracket ends there. So now we exit the next bracket, uh, which is the list of the enchantments we put in, and the next one, which should actually be the tag, and we can get all the way back out now to the end. We have finished closing everything, and we are done. So you can tell if something is not going to work. Minecraft is actually pretty good about this. If you want to make sure that your work will save, you can come in here and you can see if we delete a bracket, it will actually turn red and it should say that it expects a bracket and where it expects it. This will take a little bit to uh, figure out how to read. As you can see, it's literally just a bunch of dots, but we know the three S is right here. So it's expecting a bracket all the way past this bracket right here, which we know is right here. So if I just finish that off, same thing. If I do it one inside, uh, the game starts to get angry and you can sort of fiddle around until you figure out which closed brackets you need and which ones you need to remain open. At the end of the day, all of your brackets should be closed. This may take some getting used to. Of course, you can pause the video uh, and go back through any time that we put some brackets if you're copying this word for word. But we should be all set here. So if we go ahead and click on this button, that should spawn our Samson, which is promising. You can see he's still wearing his outfit. And if we go ahead and talk to him, you can now see that in addition to the first two trades that we gave him, he also now takes coins, the same as these coins, 32 of them for the Slappy Stick. You can see it's written in light purple. It has its lore that we've added in there, Leave Me Alone, with Knockback 10 and Sweeping Edge 3. So now I went ahead and made some dummy coins just to show you guys an example. If I go ahead and put these coins in here, you see that he doesn't want anything for the trade. And if I hold them, he does hold out the stick because I'm holding the physical item he wants. So Minecraft kind of uh, supersedes that. But if I click on this slappy stick, nothing happens. And if you notice, it's barely noticeable right here. This coin, the one that he's taking, is actually all capitals a premium currency, where the coins that I spawned were all lowercase a premium currency. So this is just to show you that stuff like this can happen very, very easily without you really realizing and that you should sort of look for those kind of errors while you're panning through your villagers and trading. But uh, we will give him the diamonds required to buy the correct coins, just like that, and he's happy with that. So now if we pop these coins in here, you can see that he is indeed selling the sloppy stick. The other good thing is these won't stack. So that's how you know they're different. But if we come over here, we can grab the slappy stick. And just like we set up, there is no more selling of the slappy stick. And sure enough, here we go. It's got our lore. It has our enchantments. We can even come over and test it on this sheep. Yep, yep, that, that does seem to work. Pigs, all right, there we go. 
Uh, so it should also be noted that a lot of enchantments work weirdly with non-weapons, so the sweeping might not work all of the time. Um, but just to just to show you that you can put multiple things on any item in Minecraft and enchant it is is pretty cool in and of itself. So Samson successfully stole us sold us the slappy stick. Try saying that five times fast, and we have pretty much finished when it comes to custom trading. So we have pretty much covered everything when it comes to custom trading in Minecraft. You can set locks on different trades. There are plenty more villager flags that you can add, such as if they give you custom XP, how much custom XP, but we've managed to set up our own premium currency system that the player can trade normal items for, the premium currency system for custom weapons and other items that you can give the villagers, and just normal generic trades that you can set up that you want your villagers to sell. All of that should be perfect for setting up an RPG village or some sort of shopping simulator within your your server. Now you will notice that this was a very tedious process and can be riddled with errors with the amount of brackets and quotation marks and things that you put within your command blocks. So while I think it's important to understand the syntax and kind of go through so you can fix errors, there is a much easier way to do this. And by easier, I'm talking about MC Stacker. Now you can see here, this is the website that I've talked about before. It's currently updated to 1.17. This is where you can go to just change all of the parameters of things in drop down boxes, and it gives you the command to put in your command block. So right here, I've recreated our uh, Samson villager just to show you guys how you can do it and the command that pops up on the top left. So if you look over here to the left, you can see uh, you can give the coordinates that you want to give over here, what you want to summon. And of course, when you go to the website, you can actually choose many different commands, but we are within the slash summon command right here because that's what we're trying to do. And that will give you all the different parameters. Now, as soon as you switch to villager, it will also give you all of the villager parameters down here. So you can see I've kind of come down and added all the things like Samson's name um, and I've set persistence required to true and all this, what type of villager he is. I'm just going to show you this quickly and then I'm going to show you how to actually do one within MC Stacker. And here is what those trades look like for him. We've added a whole bunch of things. Here's our gold nuggets that we've named coin, um, the premium currency, and here's him taking them for the slappy stick. All of that comes into the output up here, which you can just click the copy button on and then go paste it into your command block into Minecraft. And this makes your life a whole lot easier. So let's actually do this from scratch. So we'll open up a new tab of MC Stacker here for 1.17, as you can see. And we'll come over and we will click on the summon command. So if you wanted to do this from scratch and just set up a villager that trades some basic items, here's how you could do it. Now you notice with the area effect cloud, that's the first entity that sort of comes in the summon command because it's alphabetical, we don't have nearly as many options as we do from the villager. As I said earlier on in the video, a lot of different mobs and entities have different parameters that you can choose for them. For example, the area of effect cloud, you can actually change the potion effect, which is pretty cool. That's not something you can do for a lot of other entities. So if we go ahead over here, you can see that all entities in 1.17 are listed here within the summon command. Uh, the drop down might not show up on the screen because it's one of those embedded things, uh, but I promise you clicking this arrow will drop it down. We want to go and click on Villager. It's alphabetical, so that should take a minute. And you'll notice a lot of things change here, as well as giving us a command in the top right. So as for the summon coordinates, remember this is going to be where the command is executed, so most likely at your command block. So if we go ahead and click this little tilde button, it will add in the, the tilde key, which means at the command block. So right after this one, we will hit 1, so it'll spawn right above our command block. Most of these are things you can ignore, and I'm not going to go over all of them in this video because there's a lot to unpack here. Uh, but you can play around with them, mess around to see what different things do, like the motion, the yaw, if it's breathing, if it's drowning, all sorts of cool stuff you can do to make your mobs unique. But for our purposes, we only need a couple things on the left here and then most of the things on the bottom by the villager side. So if we come over here, now it was nice having Samson talk, but you can actually set the villagers to be permanently silent. There's a true and false in this dropdown, so we want to set it to true. Now, as soon as I do that, you can notice in the top right here, it actually says silent colon 1b, so it's already started to generate our command for us. We also want to set invulnerable to true, and we can even set glowing to true, just like our mad titan friend before. We'll set the custom name also to be true, and then we can go in and actually set the custom name. So if you click these little S's, it expands these windows so you can actually type into them a little bit easier. So we want to change the text here, and we want to name him Jerry. Jerry will be friends with Samson, and of course we can change Jerry's name just with the click of a button. So if I click on color here, there's a huge list that pops up of a bunch of different colors, or I can click hex code. Like I was saying earlier, 
you can swap it to hex code and then you can actually come in here the color wheel will pop up and you can change it to be whatever you want even the forbidden orange that minecraft doesn't want you to know about so there we'll go we will set it to orange and you can actually see that it even makes it up here color is set to this hex code right there so you don't have to worry about putting in all these worrisome brackets and other things that you could mess up you can just drag and drop on the website if we come over to the right here the other important one that we wanted on was persistence required set to true that means they won't despawn no matter what you can come down here now to the movement speed and we want to set that to zero of course you can just type in whatever integers you want into these little boxes and we're going to set the profession this time there's a big villager drop down so we will set it to be a cleric for example and we want the cleric to be from the taiga biome i think this type determines the biome and as for their level, we will still set them to level 5, because I think that's the best one to do. Now, this willing uh, tag right here is actually interesting, because villagers have a uh, willingness to mate with other villagers. So if you want this villager to just be ready to, to have a baby villager through the miracle of Minecraft birth, you can actually set this to be true or false if you don't want them to. It should be noted that these question marks on MC Stacker are your best friend. If one of these things does not make sense to you, click on the question mark. This little helpful UI yellow box will pop up and tell you everything you need to know about that parameter. But we're just making something simple here to get you guys used to MC Stacker. So if we pop on down, we can come and click the plus on the trades button, and this will expand the trades window. At first, this is going to look a little confusing, but I promise you it's not too bad. So first right here, you can set if they reward XP or not. If you don't want trading with your custom villager to level up your players, you can actually set this to no, and that will not give them any XP. Again, if you want a specific trade to have a max number of uses, like we do with a sword, you could put it here, like four. I think it actually tells you when you click this little question mark right there. Yeah, I was, I was a little off. Uh, closer to 214 million? Uh, actually, two billion uh, is, is a rather large number that you can set that to be. So we'll set it to be four for now. And if it has already been used a set amount of times. For example, if you want this max uses to be four, but you want it to have already been used three times for some reason, you can. This is how much XP the villager will actually get for trading with them. This is useful if you want to level up your villagers, but we're kind of setting them to five for the time being, so you don't really need to put this. Now, the price multiplier is actually a really interesting one because this, you can change the multiplier on the price, and same with the special prices if you want a discount. So these two things actually allow you to change how the item fluctuates, included with the demand. I won't get into this because you could do some pretty interesting math um, with how you calculate this kind of stuff, but just know that it's there. The meat and potatoes is right here. What is the villager going to buy from you if he's going to buy a secondary item as well and what they're selling? So if we just come in here, you can the H actually just hides it, but we want to see it, so we will click Edit Item. And then we get this beautiful, beautiful drop-down where you can just click on the item and whatever you want the villager to buy. In our example here, we will just have them buy a cactus. And you notice this whole thing expands rather nicely. So we can come here, and if we wanted to name the cactus and make it a custom cactus with lore, we could. But I won't do that for this. I'll do that for the item that he sells. We're going to want the them to buy four cactus from the player. And you can specify everything unique about the cactus here. If it has custom model data, if there's any enchantments the cactus needs before it can be sold to the villagers. If you don't want any flags to be seen by... The player while it's in their inventory for example if you want the enchantments to be hidden of course you could hide the enchantments of the cactus um, but we are not worried about any of that we just want our villager to buy cactus and as you can see it's slapped on a whole bunch of stuff to the uh, text box up here that will automatically calculate your trades now let's actually have a secondary item so in addition to them buying a cactus from you we're also gonna have them buy a jack-o-lantern it's a rather unused block in my opinion uh, so they're going to buy four cactus, and we'll have it be one jack-o'-lantern from the player in order to sell their item. Speaking of which, if we come into that here, let's have them sell, for example, maybe a player head. This is the last cool thing that I wanted to show you and how I set up the Thanos NPC earlier. So the name of this player head, let's go ahead and just name this something like bread, and I'll explain why in just a second. Uh, the color we can even set to be gold. If we wanted to change the font, we could. And now you can actually change if you want it to be bold, italic, loads of different options that are just here at your disposal. 
We'll give it a little bit of lore, and we'll say it's probably stale. Uh, we don't need to color that lore, we can just leave it how it is. And we can actually hide these two boxes if we don't want our screen to become super scrambled right now, because we've named the bread and given it lore. We will give one player head to the player. If we wanted to give it custom model data, we could, or if there's any custom tags that you want to give to the specific item to track later. If you want to set a specific block, there's loads and loads you can do to sort of experiment with. But we're here to talk about this very interesting box right here, which only shows up for the player head item. This is how I made Thanos sell the Infinity Stones in the very first shopkeep. Now you'll notice if I come to the skull owner right here, it's just a blank text box that I could enter anything. For example, I could enter my own username into this box right here. And this would actually make the villager sell my head. So if you want villagers to sell specific players' heads on your server, this is how you can do it. However, you can also make them sell custom image heads. What I mean by this is if you click on this little question mark right here, there's a whole slew of text. You don't have to worry about most of this stuff. You just want to go to Minecraft heads, this link right here. It'll open in a new tab. And you'll notice here, this is sort of a Minecraft head directory uh, of all different heads in Minecraft with different uh, commands. So if we actually come over to search head on the top right over here, we can type bread. And now you'll see loads of different bread designs, which are actually the player head item pop up. So let's just go ahead and pick a good one. Uh, I actually quite like this sort of... Um, more HD, almost reddish bread right here. So we'll go ahead and click on this. And if we pan down, you can see that in Minecraft 116 and higher, there's a give code. Well, if we head back to MC Stacker, it says the only thing you need is the give command from this website. So if we come over here, we can copy this whole give code by clicking the little copy button, pop back over and simply just paste the entire thing in that little box. It's gonna be way too big for you to see. So you can scroll through if you want, but it does exist in there. What this does is sets the player head that the villager is selling to be the code of the one on this website. Now, we don't really need to get into a lot of the other things. You can change the villager's inventory, all their gossip setting. There's a lot of other settings you can change for the villagers. But for RPG shops, this is pretty much all you'll need. So we'll go ahead and we will copy this command right here. And we will tab back over to Minecraft. And we will go say hi to Samson. But Samson, you're going to have to move or it's going to get very noisy. So you just you stay over there for a minute. So we're going to come to this command block over here, and we are actually going to, you know what, I'll, I'll do a blank one just, just, for, just for brevity's sake so you guys can see. And we will go ahead and paste the command by using control V. We'll set that up. You can see it's a very, very, very long command in the chat. And we can go ahead and right click. Now we have Jerry, who has taken on our new position as a cleric. He is from the Taiga biome. He has a gold name. And if we right click on him, you can now see he wants four cactus and one jack-o'-lantern and will trade you our bread. So it sort of cuts past all of the work that we've done with all of the meticulous inputs of brackets and text, and you can just do it on MC Stacker. So now just to show you that this does actually work, we can go ahead and get four cactus and a jack-o'-lantern. And as we give them to Jerry, he will sell us the bread which is exactly what we've been after. Congratulations, you now know how to get this bread. So that's pretty much it. That concludes the first video of our RPG sort of uh, series that we're making on villager trading. Now, of course, you can get really complex and MC Stacker will be your best friend for that. But for just setting up some shops with some custom items, you should have everything you need in your arsenal right now whether or not you want to do it by hand, or you want to go to MC Stacker and input it all with those little drop downs, either works fine. A reminder that we're going to continue this series and start to look at other methods of map making, things you can summon, custom enemies, inventory tweaks, all sorts of stuff, all done in vanilla Minecraft. So if this video helped you out at all, remember to please leave a like, it really does help the channel. And if you're interested in this type of Minecraft tutorial and the other RPG ones in the future, make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell to get notified when those videos go live. And as a last reminder, we put out a video recently on what the main problem with loot in Minecraft is. So if you're interested on more of a theory video about Minecraft, you of course can go and click the I card that should pop up at the end of this video. And until next time, guys, see you.